Welcome to the One Faith, One Christ radio ministry broadcast with Rev. Kelvin McKissick, Pastor. It is our prayer that you will find this program to be a rich source of spiritual blessings and a means for us to grow in the knowledge of our God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please stay tuned to the end of the broadcast for more contact information. And now, your host, Rev. Kelvin McKissick. As we come to the conclusion of our four-part series about the 21 states of man without God, we will look at the last four of our conditions that cause us to live apart from God. And it is my hope that each one of us who have listened to the entire series up to now has taken some stock in ourselves and truly examined our relationship with God. Now we need to look carefully at ourselves because time is growing shorter and shorter each passing day, as we do not know when Christ is coming back for his bride the church. So before he comes back, we need to be sure that we do not be like the foolish virgins that did not have enough oil in their lamps and were unprepared for the return of Christ. And the question goes out, do you want eternal life with the father? If the answer is yes, then we will need to look within ourselves to determine if we possess any of the 21 states of man without God. And if so, make the necessary corrections. So the First state we have in this lesson is lovers of self. This is the state where everyone does what is right in their own eyes, a state where selfishness abounds and the person is so full of themselves that there is no room for God in, their, in them or their lives. Second Timothy three, one through five says this, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. In these scriptures, Paul speaks to the young pastor, Timothy, giving him a bit of advice about those of us who hold ourselves higher than anyone or anything else. And notice in the scripture how Paul leads off with the root cause of our life's troubles, lovers of their own selves. And in that lay the slippery slope that causes us to become covetous, thinking that we deserve everything in life, causes us to become bolsters trying to let the world know how great we are. It lets us become proud, believing we are the greatest thing since buttered bread and all the way down the line until we are acting as if we love God, but we are so full of ourselves, so full that there is no room for Christ in us. In the summer of 1986, two ships collided in the Black Sea off the coast of Russia. Hundreds of passengers died as they were hurried into the icy waters below. News of the disaster was further darkened when an investigation revealed that the cause of the accident, it wasn't a technological problem like radar malfunction or even thick fog. The cause was human stubbornness. Each captain was aware of the other ship's presence nearby. Both could have steered clear, but according to news reports, neither captain wanted to give way to the other. Each was too proud to yield first. By the time they came, that came to their senses, it was too late. Having this greater sense of self causes others to be destroyed along with us. Jesus once told the Pharisees that because they think of themselves so highly, that those that they teach and convert are more bound for hell than themselves. You see the destructive power of loving oneself? In our desire to be our own God, we teach others to be even less godly than ourselves. Such is the state of the atheist, who wants to proclaim that there is no God, captaining their ship of life, carrying their passengers, those who fall for their foolish talk, directly into oncoming danger. And to kind of uh, fuel this and serve this point here, here's an illustration that, that kind of digs deep into that. There's a U.S. ship radioing to an uh, object out in the distance. Please divert your course 0.5 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. The objects reply, recommend you divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. 
U.S. Navy ship again? This is the captain of a U.S. Navy ship. I say again, divert your course. The objects reply, no, I say again, you divert your course. The U.S. Navy ship says this, this is the aircraft carrier U.S. Coral Sea. We are a large warship of the U.S. Navy. Divert your course now. The objects reply, this is a lighthouse. You make the call. Now, although this is not a true incident, it does serve the purpose of showing us that when we think too much of ourselves, we find that we are playing a losing battle with God. And for this state of man, Jesus does have some choice words to say. And he says this in Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And he also says this in Matthew 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So Jesus is asking, can you put him first? Can you make him your lighthouse in the distance that you will follow and, 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 take his direction. So being a lover of oneself causes us to fall away from God and we have no part in Christ Jesus. The next state of man without God is a state of being a slave of sin. This state of man without God has us being a servant to sin, being a slave to its demands. Romans 6 uh, verses 16 through 17 has this to say about that subject. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto, un, unto righteousness. But God be thankful that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. In this state, we continually yield to sin as our master. And by yielding to sin, we walk down a path to death and further separation from God who loves us. But if we look to the saving power of Christ Jesus, we can be redeemed from the slave market that sin has us in. Looking to Christ, we can have a hope of life eternal united with the Father in heaven. And again, scripture is clear on our needing to make a decision on where we are to place our loyalty. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, Matthew 6, 24. Change your state of being separated from God by acknowledging him as Lord and master of your life. Take yourself from the slave market of sin by putting yourself into the loving hands of Christ Jesus. He has already paid the price for your freedom. All you have to do is accept that gift. The next state we find ourselves in is unconscious of bondage. This is a state of man where we are not even aware that we are serving sin as our master. We are in this state because the God of this world has blinded our eyes to the truth that we are sinful by nature. And the only way to freedom is by way of Christ Jesus. And John 8 verses 32 to 34 says this. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whomsoever committed sin is the servant of sin. In this passage, Jesus is speaking to new believers in him. And in this, we see that the people are under the belief that they are not under any bondage. Although, they're, although they are not under any physical bondage, they fail to see or even think about the spiritual side of things. To know that in the spiritual sense, they are bound to that sin nature. They are bound to the God of this earth, Satan. And in these scriptures, as Jesus is warning them, as well as us, that if we continue to follow the ways of the world, ignoring the commands of God, we too become unconscious to that fact of being under sin's command. So let us 
not try to rationalize our sinful condition, finding reason after reason to justify the things we do that are contrary to God's word. We need to stop putting excuses in front of us and start listening to what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. We need to start following the will and rule of God. Abiding in the word of Jesus gives us greater knowledge of the truth, the truth that all men are sinners and only through Christ Jesus can we be set free from its bondage. As we continue in his word, our eyes start to open to our true state of being apart from God, falling closer and closer to the pit of despair. So once we take on the word of God, we start to realize how far we are from God. And in that realization, we start to take hold of the hand of Jesus. So believe upon the name of Jesus and change your eternal destination. The next state of man, apart from God, is unrighteous. Here is our state of unrighteousness that keeps us from approaching a holy God. And the dictionary defines righteousness as a state of being morally upright without guilt or sin. So then unrighteousness has us being morally unright, full of guilt and full of sin. So we're not morally upright. And 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 10 says this. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor um, adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. In our scripture, we find the full definition of unrighteousness, fornication, idolatry, adultery, homosexuality, prostitution, thievery, greediness, excessive drinking, cheating, and swindling. These are the states that we find ourselves in when we live apart from God's will for our lives. And in doing these things, we set ourselves far from God, but know that we can be different. We can change our state of mind become and because scripture tells us that whosoever believes in Jesus will have e everlasting life. And scripture also tells us that when we decide to believe upon him that is able to save us from eternal death, we find that we are changed. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Only through Christ Jesus can our old self pass away and the new self appear. Only through a saving faith in Christ Jesus can we be made whole again. Only through the redemptive power of the blood of Christ can we not fall prey to the states of man that want to keep us from the love of God. Realize the state that you are in and make the necessary corrections before it is too late. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. He can save you from yourself, bringing you into the marvelous light of salvation. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and suflidity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. And as we conclude this study, we pray that God will richly keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening in today to the One Faith, One Christ radio ministry broadcast with Rev. Kelvin McKissick. You may send letters of prayerful and financial support to P.O. Box 14325, Irvine, California, 92623-4325. If you are in need of prayer or would like to contact the ministry, call us at 562-787-8209. You can also visit the ministry website at www.onefaithonechrist.org. That's www.onefaithonechrist.org. Or email us at info at onefaithonechrist.org. That's info at onefaithonechrist.org. Be sure to tune in next week for another broadcast from One Faith, One Christ Radio Ministries. And it is our prayer that God's peace and love may reign in your heart and that you will experience his faithfulness in your life. May God continue to richly bless you.